so excited. It just looks beautiful. Yummy, Chef. Oh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to the Very Vera Show. I hope everybody had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I know we did. All five of our children were there with their families. It was a couch full of people. We just ate and drank all weekend. It was wonderful. And you know, what are you going to do with those leftovers if you had any? Well, I've got some great ideas for you today. We're going to start with a stuffing fritter. You can use it as a side dish or you can make it into a ball and have it as an appetizer. We're gonna do two great sauces to go with it. And then what about turkey divan? It is such a star, nobody will ever know it was made with leftovers. And then finally, what about a sweet potato pie with a pecan topping? It is scrumptious. And in Vera's Corner today, I'm gonna to show you how to do a quick and easy pie crust that will make homemade very simple. So, I've got a lot to do. Let me get my apron on and we'll get started on those fritters. Okay, I'm all ready to go. You know, at our house, we get very formal during the actual dinner. So I love to put everybody around the dining room table. I love it when it's cool on Thanksgiving and I can have a fire in the fireplace. But these recipes are gonna hopefully help you create a whole weekend experience out of your Thanksgiving meal and all the work that went into making Thanksgiving special for your family. All right, so these are stuffing fritters and I am using the recipe out of the Very Vera cookbook, which was our family recipe for stuffing. So I hope you'll enjoy actually making that at some point, but today we're going to use it as a appetizer idea and also a side dish idea. So it starts with, as I said, my cornbread stuffing and, you know, some people call it dressing, some people call it stuffing, but what you want to do with your leftovers is make sure that you've separated it because, you know, you've probably either cooked it in your burger or you've cooked it in a Pyrex dish. So with the leftovers, you're just gonna break it up into little bite-sized pieces. And then I've got three shallow bowls that I'm going to have with different ingredients. So I'm gonna start with flour. I'm gonna to add to that cumin, chili powder, and salt and pepper. Then in my next bowl, I've got my two eggs and salt. Just whisk that egg and get that salt incorporated. And then finally, breadcrumbs. And in this particular case, I used a little bit of seasoning in my breadcrumbs, panko, and salt. All right, so now I'm gonna use my scoops to get the right amount for each of these two different um, ideas for this leftover stuffing. So I'm gonna start with a um, larger scoop that I'm gonna make a ball out of that, press it onto wax paper and get it to about a two to two and a half inch round circle. It's almost gonna look like a fried green tomato when you get through with it. Um, I've added the garlic and the cumin back into that stuffing to make it even more flavorful um, because I wouldn't really probably use those flavors in the actual stuffing that I serve on my Thanksgiving Day dinner. So it's going to be kind of sticky. Your hands are going to get a little bit um, you know, sticky when you're doing it, but it works fine. So then the balls I'm going to make into a little bit smaller um, version and keep the circle because that's where I'm going to put my toothpick and have that to just dip into some of the sauces that we're making today. All right, so then you roll the fritters, whether it's the ball or the flat, into the flour then your egg, and then the breadcrumb mixture. And I've placed that on a clean rack with just a piece of parchment paper under it. So now I've got two different ways I'm going to cook this. I've got my larger frying pan on about a medium heat with just a little bit of oil in the bottom that I'm going to put the big fritters in. And then, you know, your fry daddy or you're just your quick fryer, that's where I'm going to do the balls. So let's get started with the balls first and I'm gonna do four at a time so I can let that rest on the side while I add these in. These are so good too, you're gonna to love this recipe. And as always, our recipes are available on our website at veryvera.com. All right, so now for these fritters. 
So like I said, now for maybe, you know, tonight or, um, you know, over the weekend when you're watching football, you've got something that could be a side dish and then you've got another idea for an appetizer, whichever one you prefer. All right, so while those are cooking, let's get started on these sauces. So I've got cranberry sauce. Surely you had some of that left over. I'm just gonna mix this up with a fork and I'm gonna add to that apple cider. And then remember when we did that baked French toast a few weeks ago that was so scrumptious from Okra Magazine and we used the run amuck bourbon barrel aged maple syrup and all of their syrups are infused. And this, we had so many comments on this product. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more because they were just written up in food and wine and their infused maple syrups are just phenomenal. All right, so this, this sauce is ready to go. Now this one, let me check on these fritters. Oh, look at that. Don't those look amazing? All right, so let me just flip those out. Almost looks like a hush puppy, doesn't it? All right, I'm gonna add more in here. So let me tell you quickly about this other sauce. It's sour cream and lime juice and cilantro. It's just going to be delicious. So I'll probably finish that during the break. And when we come back, we are gonna get started on the turkey divan. I'll be able to flip those over and we'll get started on a main dish that'll be perfect for this weekend. Welcome back everybody. If you're just joining me, you know we all enjoyed Thanksgiving and now I'm giving you some great ideas for what to do with those leftovers to make them come back to life again. All right, so during the break, I finished frying the fritters. I had the little balls that we're gonna use as an appetizer and then the flat fritters that are gonna be a side dish. And I got that last sauce made. It was sour cream. We added in uh, lime zest, lime juice. We had cilantro, salt and pepper, and that just mixed up together. So we've got two very different sauces that we can use for those. So now we're gonna get started on the turkey divan. You know, we did have a little bit of turkey left over, so it's just the perfect thing. And you might have served broccoli as a side dish. I did not, so I just steamed some broccoli to get ready for that part of this dish. And I've sliced the turkey so it'll fit very well in my pan. So now I've got my butter, that I've got melted in my saucepan. I'm gonna add in flour. And we're gonna make a nice cream sauce for this dish. So all I wanna do here is just make sure that the flour is evenly incorporated into the butter. You want it to get kind of a nice golden brown color. And so, you know, for me, a dish like this is so different from what the way you served it on Thanksgiving morning. It really doesn't even seem like a leftover. And you know, keeping in mind if you cook a turkey breast to make sandwiches and you wanna come up with a main dish to do with it, this is a really great idea. All right, so I'm gonna add into that some cayenne pepper and a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna start with my liquid ingredients, which is whole milk. And again, I try to pour that a little bit slowly so it'll thicken up nicely as you go. And the aromas already from this kitchen smells so good from those fritters. You know, I think you're gonna really enjoy that dish as well. All right, so my milk is in. And now I'm gonna add in some heavy cream. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit to medium high. All right. So let me get that added in. All right, so Vermont cheddar is the cheese of choice here. But when you go to our website at verybira.com to look for the recipes, I'm gonna give you some other suggested cheeses you could use for this as well. You just want one that'll melt really nicely um, so that that incorporates well. So I'm gonna let this just cook for just a minute while I start doing my layers. 
All right, so I've got my Jed Curtis steel hand forged pan. I actually featured him a couple of um, episodes ago too. We had a lot of feedback from that. Mine is actually autographed on the back and I love it. It's just a really unique vessel to use instead of just a plain casserole dish. So now let's layer my broccoli. And I've cut it off the stem just into some nice flowerettes and just steamed it in a steam basket um, because it's going to finish cooking. But I, I want it to have a little bit of a crunch. So you don't want it to be, you know, too cooked down. All right, now my turkey. And see, this is just not going to look like a casserole at all. And when you serve this up, you know, you will want to have a knife and a fork to present it. If you want to be doing casual and everybody's using lap trays, you know, you might want to dice the turkey instead of slices. All right, so let's see how this sauce is doing. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and what I always prompt for, folks to do if you're using the broil feature on your oven and I have an M-series wolf oven. I put it on broil and you want it to be four inches away from the heating element and whatever pan you're going to use has to be able to manage that sort of heat. So I will get this sauce poured on top. I'm going to top it with my Parmesan, get it under the broiler. And in Vera's Corner today, I'm going to give you a tip on how to make an easy pie crust in your food processor. And then we're going to get started on that sweet potato pie. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. Do you ever feel guilty because you don't feel comfortable with your pie crust so you always use store-bought? Well, today I'm going to give you a simple recipe that you will be amazed. First, cut a stick of butter into small cubes, place into a bowl, and freeze until the butter is firm. Weigh the flour, then place it into a food processor. Measure the sugar and the salt, then mix together briefly. Start placing your frozen butter into the food processor and pulse periodically. Mix until the butter is chunky. Pieces should be about pea-sized or a little larger. Pour the butter mixture into a bowl and freeze. Add water one fourth cup at a time, mixing between each addition. Not too much, just until the dough comes together. Form the dough into a ball, wrap tightly in plastic wrap, and freeze overnight. Sprinkle your surface with flour and roll out the pie dough to fit your pie pan. Carefully transfer the dough to the pie pan, then crimp the rim of the dough all the way around using three fingers. Now you're ready for you make your favorite pie. You'll be sure to impress your family and friends with your newfound skill. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that tip on making that easy pie crust in the food processor. But sometimes you don't even have time to do that. So I highly recommend Pillsbury Frozen Rollout Pie Crust. That's what I've used. And you just get it into your pie pan. I pricked the edges and the bottom with a fork. I fluted it so it looked a little bit fancy and put it in my Sub-Zero freezer drawer. And I've just now pulled it out so I can get ready to get started with this. All right, so did you have any left? over sweet potatoes from Thanksgiving. Well, we did. And so, you know, I got the idea a couple of weeks ago when Monica Pearson joined me for our special Thanksgiving episode. She made a delicious Kentucky Rumbo Honey Yam casserole. And she said whenever she had that leftover, she made a pie. And I thought, well, I'm going to make a pie. So this is just a really quick and easy recipe. You probably have all of these ingredients. I went ahead and mashed the sweet potatoes up just with your regular potato masher. I like it to be a little bit chunky. So now I've got several other ingredients that are gonna go into this. I've got egg and butter, light brown sugar, and you can use the dark if you don't have the light, then granulated sugar. We have cinnamon and nutmeg, am I just singing Thanksgiving right now again and the holidays in general? Ginger, 
vanilla. All right, then we're gonna put in a little bit of sweetened condensed milk. This is one of my th things my mother-in-law always said. Have evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk in your pantry. So I'm following the rules. All right, so get that in and you will need to have one of those little spatulas handy. And you know, you can make this an adult pie or you can make it a family friendly pie. And for this particular instance, I'm gonna make it adult pie. So we're gonna add a little bourbon in honor of Monica, which is awesome. Okay, so let's just mix these ingredients together. And then I'm gonna add these in to my mashed sweet potatoes. And you know, this is just one of those dishes that also keeps for a while in the refrigerator. So just a little slice of this, it's rich, would just be the perfect dessert. Okay, so let's add those back in now to your mashed, woo, to your mashed sweet potatoes. If you can keep it together. All right. And then, like I said, my pie crust is ready. So I've got a topping that I've gotten started over here on the side. And it is going to make this even crispy and crunchier on the top. And to me, that's just a wonderful combination when you've got the creaminess of this pie that you're gonna add in. So let me get this butter going over here. I've got it on about a medium heat. And now I'm gonna add into that brown sugar. And I want to get that just so it melts down. And then I'm going to add to that some heavy cream. Okay, so this is going to just have to cook until it's boiling just a little bit because you want that granulated brown sugar, you know, to kind of cook for just a minute. All right, let's see about getting this pie in the shell. And you know, you could do half and half with this if you also had pumpkin. You know, something that you might have done with Thanksgiving with pumpkin, you could do half and half. Because I'm going to just add this into the pie shell. And this is going to cook at 350 for about an hour. All right. Okay, so my pie that I've already made is gonna get this topping. And I actually did this one in my pottery dish that I just love. Okay, so we're gonna add in pecans to this. That's gonna get sprinkled on the top. And when we come back from the break, oh my gosh, this smells so good. We're gonna lay everything out. I'm gonna show you how to present it in a couple of different ways. And then maybe we'll sample some. So come back with me in just a minute. Okay, be honest. This doesn't look like leftovers. Honestly, I love it. Everything has turned out so great. You would never know that this was already act two of what was the main dish on Thanksgiving Day. So let's walk through what we did today. We started with the stuffing fritters and we've got two different adaptations of this dish. We did a little ball with the toothpick and the two sauces are the cilantro with the sour cream and the lime zest that's just wonderful. And then the cranberry with the jalapenos really are almost like a relish or a salsa. So I love both of those, but on the plate, look at how it presents as a side dish. And remember when we were talking about the run amok? Well, this one is smoked with pecan wood and y'all, I mean, that smell and that flavor on top of those fritters will just be the perfect touch as a side dish. You've got to order some. All right, so then 
the turkey daban. Look how beautiful it is on the plate. That is a full meal. You've got your vegetable, you've got your meat, cheese, the stuffing for your bread. It is just fantastic. And in this pan, it is just presents so beautifully. And you've got this good sauce in the bottom that you can pour over the top if you need it to be a little bit more moist. But let me come back over here quickly to this, this fritter because you don't see what it looks like on the inside. So just get a gander at how moist and delicious this is on the inside. I mean, it is going to make fried eggplant just something that you'll never make again because you're gonna to wanna to use your leftover stuffing. So I love the way that turned out. Now the pie. The pie is firm on the inside. All of those seasonings just came through. They're so flavorful. And look at this topping that I did during the break. It, it really starts to get thick quick. So as soon as all the pecans are coated, you wanna spread that over the top of the pie. Just take the back of a spoon and get it going. I've sliced a nice slice here. You never can not have ready whip in the refrigerator. But then I've got another sauce here, sugar maker's cut on the maple syrup. I'm gonna just pour a little bit of that to make that plate look good. So, you know, I always say on the Berry Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste, and it can be good taste on leftovers. So, come back with me again next week, because guess what? I'm gonna be going nuts on the Berry Vera Show. You're gonna wanna be there with me. So come back and have a great holiday season.